Kia ora Welcome. My name is Nick Eichler. I'm a registrar at the Auckland Regional Public Health Service. We're the public health unit that's the largest in the country, and we're responsible for improving and protecting the health of the Auckland, counties, and Waitemata district health board populations. I'm going to talk to you today about a telehealth solution for tuberculosis treatment. So we're going to cover tuberculosis and its global burden, the directly observed therapy mode of treatment, Teledot, which is our new innovation in this area, and where we want to take it in the future. So this little guy here is tuberculosis. It's a uh, nasty and hardy infection that can infect a lot of different organs throughout the body, particularly bad when it gets in the lungs and becomes infectious to other people. It takes a lot of, uh, <coughs> a lot of antibiotics over a long time to eradicate this from the body. Throughout the world, tuberculosis is an issue. As you can see there, it's mainly concentrated in developing countries. In Auckland, most of, our pa most of the tuberculosis patients, there's 160 new diagnoses a year, come from overseas. They're first generation immigrants. Most of them come from here, here, and here. So directly observed therapy is the World Health Organization's gold standard for treatment of tuberculosis. What this involves is once a patient is diagnosed and given their medication, a healthcare worker comes to their house once a, at least once a day, every day, for at least six months to watch them take the medication. This is done because adherence is really important in the treatment of tuberculosis. If you don't have good ad adherence, then you run the risk of getting sick again and having complications from that, from becoming infectious and passing it on to people that you're in close contact with, your loved ones. And also, if you expose the bacteria to the antibiotics but don't kill it, then you run the risk of creating antibody resistance, which becomes a big public health problem. So, in Auckland, we've got a little army of public health nurses, each one of those dots who drive all over the city at around 7 a.m. in the morning at peak hour traffic. It's time consuming, it's stressful, and it uses a lot of petrol and creates a lot of emissions. And they keep going and going and going. <laughs> uh, it's also difficult for the patients because it's, it's pretty inflexible. They, if they have a, a um, different, different schedule, they have to set up an individual appointment each day to be able to get in touch with the nurse. So this seems like a problem that's ripe for a telehealth solution. So I'd like to talk about Teledot, which is our innovation. Teledot is a web-based system where people will log onto a web page on their uh, computer, smartphone, or tablet, and record a video of themselves taking the medication. They literally take the pill, hold it up to the camera, and then ingest it. It's the, ba it's the same process that is done face-to-face -face with the nurse. Uh, that's stored on the system, and then later on, a healthcare worker can check it to um, record that they've taken the medication and that it's been the right medications. It's got some great benefits for patients. So they can, they can record a video at any time of day. We've got people who do it at 3 a.m. in the morning. It's good for shift workers and teenagers. Um, it brings care closer to home. It, it empowers the patient to take control over their treatment and to decide how they're interacting with the health system rather than us imposing a time and a schedule on them. It removes the stigma of having a healthcare worker coming to your house every day in a marked car that says public health service and watching you take a medication. And it gives you back your privacy. There's no neighbors asking, oh, why does that person come to your house every day? 50% of our patients are under 30. So an online tool works really well to meet them in a space that they're used to interacting in. And 91% of people around this age group have access to a smartphone. It's really accessible and people know how to use it. People, they find it easy, and it's, and it's great, because they can be wherever they want, and they can do it at whatever time they want. From the healthcare point of view, the nurses really like it, because they can view the video at any time. So if something else comes up during their day, they can shift things around it, so that they're still doing their dots every day. It decreases the transport costs, and decreases the emissions that we're putting into the air from sitting in traffic, um, and increases the value that we're getting for our resource. Nurses can do the same job while, while then putting other time into tracking, tracking outbreaks and all the other work that we ask them to do. Ideally, we'd have 100% of our patients on some form of direct observed therapy as the World Health Organization's standard. Before we introduced this program, we had only a third due to the resource constraints that we had. Since we've introduced it, we've increased that to just over half on some sort of direct observed therapy, and all of that increases basically due to the tally dot. On a per patient basis, it only costs us 25% of the original program. So why am I here talking to you about this? Um, I think 
that it's a great system, but we can take it further. So we want to create an integrated native app for smartphones and for computers that's available on app stores and easily accessible to people. As I said before, a lot of our patients are first generation immigrants and English is a second language for a lot of them. So we want to have a culturally appropriate design experience so that they can have it in their own language and for people who aren't so familiar with technology, they can have audio and visual cues that are appropriate to them that help them to use the technology easily. We want to build in a text messaging capability as well so that people can ask us about side effects they're having with the medication or just tell us that their dot's going to be at a different time or slightly delayed um, without us needing to be in constant contact with them. We also, at the moment, you have to be connected to the internet to use the system, which means that you have, you have to be, have a solid connection or reception. We want, to be able to, we want the app to be able to record a video and timestamp it when you're out of reception, and then when you come back in, it can automatically upload it, and the nurse can see it and see, and see that you took the medicines at the right time. This increases people's flexibility, it lets them go camping on the weekend, it lets them go home without interrupting their treatment. And we think that it can definitely be scaled up to the other public health units around the country. They're all doing this sort of program. I know that there's a public health nurse in Dunedin who drive, drives from Dunedin to Gore once a day just to do a 10 minute visit to see <laughs> to see a patient, I'm sure they would benefit from the productivity boost. We can see our app up there right next to uh, Pokemon Go or Spotify in the future. Uh, there's also other applications for the basic idea of the technology. So a lot of the work that uh, the public health unit is involved in is outbreak management. If you have a patient with a really infectious disease like measles, we ask them to stay in quarantine so that they don't infect vulnerable people in the community. Sometimes it's hard to know if they're actually doing that, and so we could use this system to take a geotagged, time-stamped video or um, picture to ensure that those, those people are actually staying in, a, in the isolation. You can also use this with other, with other medications. You need a really high adherence rate to HIV medicine as well, or you risk, run the risk of having resistance to those drugs. Uh, methadone clients could use this at home to reduce the burden on pharmacists of watching them take the, the medicines. And for other things where adherence is really important, like if you've got a transplant and you're running the risk of uh, rejection if, you don't, if you're not taking the medicines, then the medical team can monitor that. And then let's not forget the emerging internet. So there are 3.2 billion internet users in the world, that's almost half of all of us, and two thirds of those are in the developing world. The next billion are gonna come primarily from China and India, uh, places where there's a lot of burden on tuberculosis, as well as Africa. And they're gonna need cheap and accessible means of doing direct observed therapy for tuberculosis, because emerging health systems are not going to have the resources to send a person out to every single patient with tuberculosis. It's just not gonna be feasible. Um, so, to sum up, tuberculosis is a big and global problem. We've developed a flexible, cost-saving um, solution that empowers patients, and we think that it's got the potential to scale throughout New Zealand and potentially the world. Thanks very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Nick Eisler.